I just want to say my book, Dosing Amanita Muscaria and What to Expect, is now in pre-order. It is May 2023. It releases in June of 2023, and I'll be doing book signings. And if you belong to a large group or you know someone that would like to have me come do a book signing, then hit me up on Instagram and let me know about it. I was laying here not wanting to get up. And it occurred to me, I went and got my, just like did a general blood work checkup thing. And I lost the paper, but like my liver numbers are fine. But that was right before August and before everything blew up. So I've been taking higher doses of Amanita. I should get my liver checked and take y'all with me and just show you what the numbers are. You want to do that? Let me go call the doctor. I just had the photo shoot for my author photo for the book yesterday. And now this morning, after fasting all night, it's time to go for my blood test. So I'm going to do sugar, cholesterol, all that, and then a full liver panel. So hmm, let's go do that. <laughs> Good morning, baby. And we'll call you with the results for this tomorrow, and you can just check out. On the my I am checking my results. I just got the note about my chart, and then it was ready. The problem with this mushroom right here is that, see how that first word is Amanita? So it is Amanita, which is the genus, and then it is called muscaria because that is its species name in the genus amanita there's over 600 mushrooms and we haven't found them all yet in that genus of those 600 mushrooms some are edible and tasty and delicious and some we don't even know what they do some are harmless some are medicine and some are deadly and two of the most deadly mushrooms on the planet are in the amanita genus but they have completely different toxins in them. And people always feel like they need to talk about this one when they talk about those. And it's a very weird thing that I don't understand. It stems from ignorance of simple classification. And then it stems from fear of mushrooms and people not knowing much about mushrooms. This is Amanita phylloides. It is one of the deadly ones. You'll see it's like a hint of light green and white. How can you confuse that with Amanita muscaria that is so brightly colored? You know, you can't. And this is Varosa. It is white, white, white. And I've picked many of these. They, they grow around here. This is Amanita Varosa. These are the two deadly ones. And it is genus Amanita species Varosa. And then this is genus Amanita, species Phylloides. Don't eat them. They don't look anything like Amanita muscaria. There are some rules for identification. I have videos about that on AmanitaDreamer.net. The other reason that I think that this is a problem is because when it comes to entheogens and drugs that have nitrogens in them that are very powerful drugs, usually there is some point where you need to give your liver a break. And there are some pharmaceuticals that if you take them, you'll need to get your liver checked periodically or whatever. But we don't even know what that is with Amanita muscaria. And there are people that are fear mongers that freak out about it, even if they know the difference between the deadly ones and this one, and that this one is not that one. And those have amatoxins. They're called amatoxins. They are in the deadly ones. They are not in this one. They are not. This one is not deadly. The other one, a couple of bites could kill you. This one, we don't even know how much can kill you because it's only a theoretical dose because we don't have deaths. Different mushroom, different pharmacology, different chemistry, right? The thing about this mushroom is 
it does have some very powerful complex drugs in it, clearly. And we know that with psilocybin, you're supposed to give your liver a break. I don't know what the studies are about that. This isn't my, that's not what I do here. Uh, but if I'm sure the studies are out there already, that the studies are out there with LSD and how much you can take and like what the limits are and when you should get your liver checked or whatever. We don't even have oral ingestion studies about this mushroom. People freak out about ibotenic acid for another whole set of reasons that again, are errant and a misreporting of the science. There's so much misinformation here. I have videos about ibotenic acid, which is the major medicine drug active in this mushroom before it converts to ibotenic acid, I mean, before it converts to muscimol. And I have videos about that that I hope that you go watch on amniadreamer.net. I have an entire playlist devoted to ibotenic acid, its neurotoxicity, the words toxic, uh, the misinformation, the science, why the science is bad and can't be trusted, and then calling for more science. I have used Amanita more in the last eight months in that one period of time than in any other period of time. And I wanted to show you the results of my blood test. So that's urea nitrogen, and it's a waste product uh, from the breakdown of proteins in the kidneys do that. So that's a really good kidney indicator. So this is my current test. This was my test eight months ago, it's actually dropped some, and that's the normal range. And then creatinine is a waste product from breaking down muscles. Again, the kidneys do that. 0. 0.7 and then point again, those have come down actually. <laughs> that's the normal range. And then down here, we're going to look at bilirubin. Total bilirubin is a fluid made by the liver. So this is a good liver test. And 0. 0.2 to 0. 0.3. So that's the normal range. And then alkaline phosphate, this is a liver, kidney, and bone enzyme. I'm right smack in the middle there. And then AST is another enzyme in the liver, heart, and muscles. My enzymes are right in the middle, perfectly normal. And then ALT, an enzyme found mostly in the liver. So this is another good liver indicator, 13 and 18. Again, right down the middle. So if anything, my numbers sort of improved, but mostly they stayed the same, even though my use of Amanita has, it's more than I've ever used it. And I can tell you the way I've been using it was in the beginning, it was every day, high doses of muscimol for a week. And then I would purposefully just take other things because I didn't want to adapt to it and hit that point where my body was going to kick me out and not let me use it. So I just kind of wanted to stay ahead of that. I have sort of intermixed that with the microdosing protocol with the T 50, 50, as I started healing and feeling better. Then I would go back to the muscimol. My T doses have easily been four or five times what I usually take. I have added other things in there um, like Kratom to give my body a break. I've used Benadryl to give my body a break and I try to just sort of mix it up after taking Amanita for four or five days at a time. But in the beginning, I took it for two weeks straight in high doses. That was what, a couple months ago, eight months ago. But it's just been all over the place. I haven't measured it, but it's definitely been higher than usual. It is my belief for, for the reasons that I'm gonna say that Amanita muscaria will kick you out physically before you would ever use enough to have kidney and liver damage. Totally my opinion. Because it doesn't take much before you start getting side effects from using it that make it very uncomfortable. Or you'll just get repulsed by it and not want to use it. Or it works and it heals you. So as you take it, it does less and less because you don't need the medicine that it's giving you. Or because you need less over time and it's healing you, you're just, you don't need it. You take it, you're like, eh. Or you keep raising your dose and eventually you're just like, eh, I don't want it. And then you take it and you get nauseous and you're like, yeah, I just don't really want it. I believe you would reach that point long before liver and kidney damage could happen. So I believe. The packaging of the mushroom is intelligent. And indeed, when you look at Kevin Feeney's book, The Fly Agaric Compendium, there's a chapter in there by Ava Machacek where she goes through what she has found so far and compiling what all 
the components are in this mushroom. There are so, so many. And they are complex compounds. This is a highly complex mushroom. There's a lot of wisdom in the packaging and the design of it. And there's other things to take into consideration, not only our own digestive system, but then the gut and the microbiome and moving through digestion. And the fact that when you ingest this mushroom orally versus smoking it, you get completely different effects. How much of that is left to process through the kidneys and liver aside from ibotenic acid and muscimol? But we know that the body does convert ibotenic acid to muscimol. So then the liver, what is it dealing with? It's dealing with muscimol. What are the effects of muscimol on the liver? We don't know. We don't have oral ingestion studies, but it's not breaking it down. It's merely passing it right on out. Is it damaging the liver just because it's passing through? We don't know because there's no oral ingestion studies. So I didn't answer many questions and it's simply anecdotal that I had my liver checked twice. That's just me and I'm only one person and I am not a whole scientific study. We need more studies. I don't know what else to tell you about that. And if you've been sitting here saying that this shit's going to blow your liver and kidneys out, maybe I helped you out with that to understand why all the misinformation. And YouTube has demonetized my channel. So if you could buy me a coffee, use the link in the first comment in the description to help me pay the bills and keep bringing you information like this just to pay for the blood test. That was $200 out of pocket. I love you, beautiful people. Thank you.